Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Horrible. Ooh, that might have been the oh. best you ever had. You see, oh, that was good. This is yours. That was pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's because I haven't been sucking dick, so my vocal cords are just, it's its just new. They're not damaged anymore. You just make this shit up. I, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, y'all. I'm your girl, Mandy V, a.k.a. Pay the Stallion, a.k.a. That Bitch. What's up, y'all? I'm Wheezy, and today we have a guest. Mandy and her know each other, but she's one of my favorite TikTok people, and I don't oh. even have a TikTok. <laughs> That's crazy that you don't have a TikTok. You watch she's... TikTok on Instagram, but don't people, you? Yeah, oh, I watch it on Twitter. But people, like, just send me things. And um, I was looking for a guest because I feel like everybody's like interviewing dating coaches recently mm-hmm. and they all have the same kind of like mundane voice mm. in a way. And it's kind of annoying me. So I was like, damn, who could we like interview that actually creates content around dating? And it was perfect when I found you, especially because oh, y'all know each other. You. So wait, Thank how you. do y'all know each other? Uh, through Chelsea. Yeah. So uh, first, she's the first woman who's ever left me speechless. <laughs> I have never been speechless in my entire life. What was she talking about, asshole? Uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what was I we mean, talking about, girl? I feel like I would say some crazy shit that I did and then my shit seemed like PG to her. <laughs> she would say some shit and I started feeling like I prude. I was like, well, I've only pegged one guy. She was like, I feel like you're home. And I was like, okay. Where no, were you talking about pegging? Liter- was it we, at were at Bond Bond we were at Bond Street. We were getting okay. having a fancy ass dinner and talking about sucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> but then also... When when she was so everyone in that group is married, has partners. I'm the only single bitch going around, like just really trying to oh, pick up bars. This this was no, this was a year, a year or two ago. Yeah, two years. You were um, a single year or two ago. Maybe at the time. <laughs> maybe at the time. Maybe you know. Maybe I was on one of my thirteen breaks. Yeah, yeah. I was on one of my thirteen <laughs> breaks. I was on one of my thirteen <laughs> breaks, and we also go to Soho House. And everyone's dancing because this is when, uh, by the way, shout out Black Girls Texting. They threw like They're events amazing. during the summertime yeah. at Soho House. So we're on the rooftop. I look over and some of y'all saved the video because everyone wanted to know who the hell you were. That this girl has one leg on the ground, the other leg literally behind this man, moving her ass. And I said, oh, this is why you got a ring. This is why you get niggas. <laughs> oh, no, we need to put I, the video in a clip. Because I cannot do this. I might still have it on my phone because you it asked me to send it to you. hands The way she the moved, pavement. I said, oh, I ain't never going to get a man if I got to do this. Okay, so it's not oh, beauty. And, it's not just beauty and, and brains. Bullshit. And not just brains. She is fun. She like, oh, And, and I think that when, when you think of like beautiful girls who get rich niggas or things like that, like even to find out like she graduated from fucking Columbia, which by the way, you had a cute man that was in your class and I'm mad he moved back overseas. <laughs> you know who I'm talking I know about. Exactly what you're and talking so about. like, I think to to be in a group as, as myself who isn't seeking marriage and things like that, it was yeah. really interesting to be around because there's Gabby, there's Chelsea, there's all these women who literally want the opposite of what I do. So when we all get together, like there's just so many different narratives on how to do things. And what's crazy too is, I know what I've been coming on here saying, and we're going to get into dating. I actually was told something not to do when dating now, now that I'm like going out dating from these types of conversations. I've been actually told I am shooting myself in the foot for going into dates saying, I don't want kids. I don't want marriage. I don't want all the things that I talk about on this pod because told you that um, I was in a group. It wasn't even a girl that I know. This was in LA. So we're all at talks and I'm like, yeah, girl, I don't want this. I don't want this. And she was like, oh, well, then if you go into dates, letting a guy know there's literally going to be zero thing for him to show up and want to pursue with you. Yeah. Even as a man, say they don't even want those things. No, but as soon as they know you don't want those things. That's interesting. So literally it was like, oh, no, go in and say you want a ring. Go in and say you want a summer walker. Go in and say you want a faithful man. Go in and maybe even say you want to be a mom. They're not even. Oh, wait. Our our guest, by the way. Oh, yeah. Sahar. Sahar. (laughs) Sahar. So, so you agree yeah, I, with that? I think like men are exploitative in nature. And what I mean by that is if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. Like, I, I think that's who they are. Like, if you ask for the bare minimum, they're going to just give you less. less than the like, bare that's, just, that's just who they are yeah. as humans. So I feel like you need to set the bar so high to get the bare minimum. Like, ah. I, I, I think when you're going in there and being like, oh, I don't want kids. I don't want a ring. I don't want this. I don't want that. Then they're going to be like, well... Nigga, I'll give you this dick. Then. Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to give you shit. Like, I agree with you. I don't want any of that, too. But the fact that you don't want it, why am I going to show up for you? Ooh. 
You know, yeah. what do you want then? A long term partner? It I, doesn't really I, I would matter. Like a, yeah, I just feel like it's none of their fucking business what you want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why? Because cause they're not even really about to give you a, what you what want. What you anyway. really want. Anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not sitting there actually trying to take notes, like, let me deliver what she fucking wants. No, there we go. Fuck. They're going to give you what they want to give you. So at least go in there and like have some requirements. You know, like when you show up for a job interview, you're not going to go in there and be like, I don't want no breaks. I don't want no bonus. I don't want this. I don't want that. They're going to be like, okay, well, we still not going to give you any of that. But <laughs> the fact that you don't want it, now we're thinking about maybe I should give this to the next person. Or not only that, maybe I'll give it to you and you're going to show up and do all the things and yeah. over deliver because you're going to want me to give you those things. that you Yeah. Know. So let me ask you this because for some reason it's making me think of situationships. Mm. Do you think that by a woman saying she's not looking for X, Y, Z, that she can possibly end up in a situationship because there's not like a standard set? I mean, it depends on the woman. Like, I feel like when you go into a situation and announce what you don't want, you're setting, you're pigeonholing yourself. Like, I think you should keep that just close to the chest so that if you do want to pivot and if you do end up wanting more, then great. It's always easier to ask for more and then want less than ask for less and then want and more. And then want more later. It's really hard to like reverse in this reverse relationship it. though and say like, you know, even you saying that you're not an emotional person or you don't want love. I believe oh, no, you I when you say I don't want those things. You said you don't want, you don't need a kiss. You don't need to do intimacy. No, but that was, so no, 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 no. So as of right now, those are actually why I'm not in these casual sex relationships anymore. I yeah. absolutely want kissing. No, I know I want you do. Intimacy. I'm saying, I, but from before. So when I hear you today, I believe you about nothing except kids. I think that if the right person came in and really changed your life and made you feel whole and you see yourself as a partner and he's on your level, I think that you could understand marriage and you'd be like, yeah, why not? I think you might even want kids. No. I don't know. I maybe not, about maybe kids, not but... like via yourself, like maybe via surrogate. You don't know. So I'll be honest with you, too. In terms of marriage, especially now, I think that marriage to me and we can get into what that looks like as yeah. well, because, y'all, we got a lawyer. So we talking prenups and all the things. <laughs> To me, marriage, after realistically this relationship with you, the relationship with Bridget, those are partnerships. I don't want no more of them things. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to hold you. The idea of splitting assets, the idea of actually really holding out in something that maybe doesn't make me feel good in the moment. Like, I can walk away easier in friendships or boyfriend relationships than I've been able to do from you or or Bridget or or the the idea of a business. Maybe with your ex, because he wasn't necessarily the creme de la creme of niggas financially. But if he was, you might want marriage. But that's the thing. Then to me, am I just marrying for money? As of right now, I'm in a place where... You don't have to. I I don't have to marry for money. So here's why you had to make a partnership with me. Can't speak for Bridget. We're building something amazing and we knew it was becoming financially lucrative. And that's why we had to do that. And we, to this day, can't even break that because that's how much our shit is worth. If one of us wanted to leave we'd be figuring out what the fuck we would do with a small percentage. My, my point. If you built a relationship with someone and started building an amazing life and building businesses and having things that are more than just surface level, you may want that marriage. And I Imagine don't... Imagine how your brain think, works with a friend when you build a business. And that's my thing. I don't believe in friendships and business. I don't believe in, like, navigating those but things. But podcast had, even. You've but, even but, made but, podcasts that you produce. Like, I'm just trying to get you to see beyond, like, your no as more to your connection with a friend is not as deep as the partner that may be the one you end up with forever, right? So if you could decide to produce a podcast for friends or decide to get a, a take a fucking cruise with a friend and do a vacation thing and do a, a club night with them, you might come up with something bigger and better with the man that's meant to be for you. I'm telling you, I think when you meet someone that's probably going to be your mate, they're going to fill you up way more than your friends that are smart and business minded. I mean, that's definitely that's mm-hmm. definitely true. I think maybe marriage for you is not right now. And that right now may never come also. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. It might it might be not right now. And you say that for the rest of your life or you might meet someone or 10 people. You never know. Right. right. That make you want to to commit that make you want to not be able to easily walk away. Men are better than the last men you dated. For real. Like, I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I, I don't know. I, but, also, but also, I know about a lot of, like, me and my friends talk about all the partners they have. Some of y'all listen. None of them niggas is good. 
Like, yeah, I ain't gonna so, hold so, you. So there's, no, there's not one man that any of my friend date or talk that you to would want to be that with. That I would want to be with. Yeah. And so even when I look back at my ex or any of the men, honestly, throughout my 20s, and I know y'all, y'all are sick of hearing about my ex, when I look at even all of the men that either made me cry, that I opened my legs to, that I sat here and wanted to spend so much time with, when I look at literally the, like, I yeah. wish I could take all that shit back. None of them niggas was good. I look at a lot of them now. None of them niggas would have fulfilled me or made me happy in who I am today. Like, so to be fair, nah, fuck them niggas. Do I you don't think know. We just, I don't do you think our, that. Do you, do you think there's anyone who's happy with so, a man? So here's the thing. It's not even with, uh, and I don't, of course, want to make this male bashing yeah, yeah. because no, no, I know no, that there's no, a lot. No, well, no, I don't no. think it is. Well, that. I know there's a lot of queer people that listen too, right? Right. So in relationships as a whole, yeah. I think that unfortunately we've gotten to a place where romantic relationships yes. have these, impossible expectation. I agree. And so that's the problem. So when I'm sitting here traveling with my friends, yeah. like I just spent a fucking week in Abu Dhabi and it was fucking amazing. Yeah. And what if but, you met a man that would buy the crib with you in Abu Dhabi? You go so, there how many but, times a year? I mean, but that's what I'm saying. So that's still, okay, cool. Let me sit here and get a sugar daddy. Let me yeah. sit here and make a transactional relationship. Yeah. That's fine. But when I sit here and think about the, the unrealistic expectations of a partner Emotionally. romantically, it's emotionally, it's financially. Yeah. It's you sit here and give this person X amount of time to do you wrong. Mind you, a friend fuck up one time. You, you cut you, him out. You cut him out. Yeah. There's just all of these things. that, I, And also, you don't want to share a romantic partner. You yeah. have these jealousies and these emotions that no, don't really exist with family or friends. Yeah. To me, those those types of relationships really are confusing to me now. Yeah. Because when I sit here and talk to my friends about it, I'm like, why are we doing this? Why are we subject subjecting ourselves well, what's, to bullshit? Well, what's the other option? If you are a woman who wants marriage and children, what is our other option but to subject ourselves to the bullshit? But also, there's but, I love my work. Like, I feel like I have amazing jobs, jobs, whatever. Like, nothing good comes without bullshit. Agree. Yeah, no, I agree. Agree. Right? So, like, I, I, I don't agree. expect I that think, it won't be worse. I agree. And I think, like, our grandma's generation was so bad where they were getting their ass beat every day. And then I think one thing a new generation always does is we swing the pendulum so far to the right because we want to get away from this. Mm. And so we've swung the pendulum so far to the right where we're like, oh, he does this, cut him off. Like, I'm not going to be like my mom. I'm not going to be like my grandma. And it's like, you know, there's a middle ground. There's a middle ground. And we keep doing this. It's the same thing that we did with the whole like feminist movement, right? Bitches over here were like, oh, I don't, I, I want to go to work. Like, I don't want to sit at home and make sandwiches. Well, that should be a hip hop feminist girl. We, we swung the pendulum <laughs> so far to the right, being like, oh no, like now, now, now everybody wants to stay at home. Now everybody wants to rely on a man. It's like we can't seem to sit in a middle ground. We can't seem to say, well, the reason why those women wanted to go to work was because they couldn't fucking own property or have a bank right. account without a man. And the reason you bitches want to sit at home is because going to work and working a nine to five is not built for the the female, yeah. you know, body. Why don't we find something in the in the middle ground and try to find careers that fulfill us and that inspire us? And, you know, we can make our money, but men still are chivalrous and they're still masculine and all of that. So do you do you. um lean into the patriarchy as a woman who's a lawyer yeah i want to know what what your middle ground is to how you've been able to achieve professional success yeah but you've also been able to be very much into your divine femininity to where yeah. you're not a masculine woman present i mean yeah, yeah, yeah i don't yeah. know if no, in no. your relationship you are oh, but i was sure. gonna, you know, i'd actually disagree i think that your videos are have hella masculine energy yeah but in a good way well, like the I, videos are one thing I'm talking about in her relationship. Oh, maybe I don't feel your relationship. Like, but I was going to say, you definitely give me like, to me, strong. that's why, that's why you see the comments where dudes are mad. They don't get mad at the girls that have the soft attitude, especially. And there's a video I like of you. I'm trying to think. I don't, it's fresh on my mind because I looked this morning. You're in a workout outfit. Yeah, I'm talking about. Your body looks Hakimi, amazing um, and beautiful. You're like, okay, yes. Yeah, so anyway, you know, you guys tell me, I don't know. Like I'm a lawyer two times. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and then you go back into it and it's like, it's so strong that I feel like men, even when they're looking at you, be beautiful. You were in your kitchen. Yeah. You look dainty. Yeah. Just the assertiveness is masculinity to me. Well, to me, the assertiveness is femininity. Mm. So to me, it's like, I, I think right now the way that things are being portrayed is masculine is strong in your face, assertive. Right. 
and feminine is dainty and quiet and speaks like this. And I, I just, I don't, I don't believe that. I think feminine is being strong, but being strong, like having this internal strength. Mm. Right. And I think masculine is a little bit more. I think it's like a roughness that that isn't quite strategic, that isn't quite tailored. But I think to be a strong woman and to be assertive is to be extremely feminine. And the reason why I want to push back on that is because for so long we've lived in a society where the feminine woman was the dainty, quiet woman. And what that's done is it has made white women be extremely feminine and black women and women of color be considered extremely masculine. Damn, that's a great point. Because they're assertive, because they're loud, because they're, or they're the exactly angry. what they want. Right. So I, I want to push back on this notion of what is feminine and what is masculine and this idea that like the strong and and the quiet are, are the, the the two worlds that we have to Right, because we, we hear men say this clip to the whole tip. So yeah. Them, no, I am a feminine star. Spoken woman. Yeah, who will like fuck you up? <laughs> Period. You know what I mean? That's who I am. Like I'm and and everyone the way that I am in my relationship is kind of a mixture of that. Like I am feminine. I, I mean you have to understand I was raised in a Middle Eastern culture in a Middle Eastern household. What does that mean? That means literally from the time that I was a child, everything I've done, everything that I was pushed to do was not to be great individually, but to be great in order for a man to pick me. Middle Eastern, right? from, oh, where? from Iran. Okay. So like Middle Eastern Muslim household, you're just, you're raised to be a wife. Not every culture raises women to be a wife, but you're raised to be a wife. From, from the very beginning, you're like, let me go to law school and get degrees. Not because I just fucking am so excited to be a lawyer, but because that's just going to increase... Gonna that's what that's where I'll meet a man and that will increase my value and potential of then finding a greater man. What were the wow. what were culturally the the sexual like I don't know the views maybe when you were growing up because I know with black women it's always like you're moving too fast or you're this or that or like the yeah. things that we are not supposed to you know do, do when we're growing up but what was it in middle eastern culture like i mean you're not supposed to do shit or, like, what person is or iranian specific? yeah you're not supposed to be doing shit and i was i was just a bad kid like i've i had a growth spurt from sixth grade to seventh grade so i've been damn near six feet tall since i was 13 years old i've looked exactly the same the only thing that's changed is my nose because i've got <laughs> two rhinoplasties but other than that a bitch has looked exactly the same and you weren't allowed to do anything, you know, like and I grew up in a household where my mother wears the hijab. So we come from a very religious household. When I was nine years old, I decided I wanted to wear the hijab so I could be like my mom. You know, I'm a little girl. I want to be just like my mom. It coincides with 9-11. So I'm getting teased at school and I come home and I tell my parents, yeah, about that hijab. Like, I don't want to wear that anymore. And they're like, no, 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 you can't change your mind. And I was like, you can't change your mind. I can't change my mind. So from the time I was 12, 13, I'm going to school like Loki burk it out. And then I'm changing into the smallest mini skirt. Oh. And I'm like, I'm a fast little girl at the time. I'm not telling people I'm 12, 13. I'm going meeting guys in college who are <coughs> 17, 18. 16, yep. And I'm doing the things. And I, it was bad. It got it got so bad that the way my dad found out about everything. Whew. And imagine he thinks I'm like a good girl who's wearing a hijab. My mother is had a trip planned to Iran. He goes and drops her off at the airport. In my little 12, 13 year old mind, I calculated that I had more time than I actually did. Me and my little hoe best friend, she comes over. We invite two guys who are college football players. She's having full on sex with one in bed and I'm damn near naked in a thong. My dad walks in. Oh, girl, stop. My Middle Eastern Muslim father walks in and drops to his knees. Were they black? Girl, yes, they were black. I saw I just wanted to know because I know it was worse. <laughs> and what happened? I mean, it was just like a pause for a second. And he, my dad's a big dude. My dad's 6'4". My dad was a bodybuilder. He trained with Arnold. So oh he starts God. being like, get the fuck out of here. And the guys, they, they run out. And the next day, my parents took me to a doctor to see if I was a virgin or not. Oh, and, wait, not them pulling the T.I. on you. And the wild part is I had never had sex. Y'all, I had never had sex. OK, oh. but your hymen can rip in a variety of fucking ways. And I will say that was that is one of the myths that if you're in like 
anywhere from your early 30s on, the idea was if your hymen was broken, you had to have sex. We now know you that could you do, could it, do from it from riding a bike from, from... I'll be honest. I think that even today, that same propaganda is pushed, though. I don't think that in schools they're teaching that like no they're not no they're not but I think that I I think I I think think but our generation now with kids younger now know that your cherry popping cherry popping like is something that we're all expecting yeah and you have to understand I never like I never bled and I also used to think that whenever your cherry pops you bleed but there's hymens that don't bleed yeah you could rip and not bleed mine did I don't know I think the first time that I had (laughs) sex actually was the first day of my period so I bled like for three days after I lost my virginity. But I think it's because my period just came on. And at that point, I wasn't tracking when it came yeah, on. No, like, you have, oh, you yeah. didn't have like the same idea of being in yeah. tune with your body. So where I thought my cherry popped, I bled like a period the yeah. next day. So I never really correlated that. Oh, I remember. Pop. I remember the feeling. It felt like a pop. It was if it could have been diction. I mean, diction, dictionary definition. It was like everything about it. And it was a stream that came out and then it was finished. It was crazy. Oh, oh, yeah. No, that didn't happen. I didn't, happen have, to that me. I, no, I didn't <laughs> have that experience. Okay, well, but my parents, my, like, <laughs> my, my dad, yeah, but my, my dad took me, and you know, it's against the fucking law. Like, wait, what's against the law? You're not, you're not, you're not supposed to be taking your daughter and like, come asking, on, lawyer, asking whether or not her hymen is ripped. Like, you have to low key make a doctor tell you that. You can't. That's an so invasion. How, why is, wait, so I don't know how Ti did it. But I, I know in California, where I was at the time, they had to tell the doctor, like, the, I remember the doctor distinctly telling them, I'm not allowed to share this information with you. And they were like, you know, the doctor was also Persian. They're like, come on, bro. Like, what's up? Uh, and she was like, yeah, her hymen's ripped. And I looked at the bitch like, my hymen's ripped. I went home that day and... And, and they, they just... They, e- even though even though I had said, never had sex, dude. I didn't even and have And they didn't sex believe you, I was though. 18. No, still to this day, my parents don't fucking believe me. And I went home. Well, also, and my dad they looked at me. And your, your best friend was. I know she was. She was getting. getting she fucked. was getting down. She was fucking getting fucked. <laughs> and I was in my thong. So I context clues. Yo, know, honestly, circumstantial evidence. My best friend growing up was Persian. Is it? Can I say Persian? Yeah. Okay. Because some people say Iranian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So everybody, I don't know if it's because it's like they look Latina, but yeah. they're not, but there's a more exotic look. <laughs> Black men go crazy for Middle Eastern girls. Like, in my high school, I remember maybe five girls. And I was like, why are they always getting fucked? And I'm not. But I'm say all crying. this to say, we would go and sneak around to, like, City Walk. It was this place in Universal. We'd go meet the boys, go to the club, come home. Yeah. Her mom came in there, slapped the shit out of her. And I was like, ooh, well, am I in this too? <laughs> and I remember her mom specifically talking about how she was supposed to be with someone else. And I think even, and I'm only 32, she had an arranged marriage, like, ready. Now, she ended up not getting married, but yeah. I remember her telling me, like, oh, like, me going out and looking at boys is not what my family wants. No, I bring that there, up. There, yeah, you don't, you don't do that. Like, you go through the traditional route of suitors come to your house. Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, I mean. Who are these suitors? Like, people in your fucking community. Like, they okay. put it on a billboard. What they do? No, it's like, think about, um. You got you got your little aunts, you know, not your real aunts, and they have <laughs> okay. sons, you know, and you go to like someone's wedding or someone's party, and they and they see you, and they're like, oh, she's she's pretty, like she would be great for you, son, whatever, and the entire family with the boy shows yeah. up to your house with gifts and whatever, and asks for your hand in marriage. Bitch, this is being like Bridgerton. No. Have you met them before at this point? Um, yeah, I mean, in the like in in Iran right now, in like the small villages, no, it'll be your first time meeting them. But in in more recent modern times, yeah, it's like sometimes it's it's your man, but the families don't know. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so like they literally come. Okay, how many? Like, is it? At, I mean, it depends on how like and how what suitable age? you are, oh. and it depends like again where you are. So if you're in Iran, you start getting them at like fifteen, sixteen. Suitors at fifteen, and how old are the men? Are they also fifteen, sixteen, or they're like men? nineteen, twenty? Oh. Some girls get grown men. It depends on, like, your value and, like, your package. If you're a girl who comes from a more impoverished family, you're not highly educated, whatever, your family is trying to marry you off into a higher, into Loki, into Loki, whatever family will take you because the finances are, they get shifted over there, right? So in, like, some very, very traditional extremists, 
it's like the daughters are 15, 16, and they're getting wet off to like 30, 35 year old men. Now, in more modern times, like today, there's a lot of boys that I grew up with, you know, just by virtue of going to the mosque, going to like different occasions. And I'm seeing the guys and my mom is meeting their mom. Their mom. And so now all of our families are friends. Now we want to marry within one another. And so the moms aren't stupid. Like if they see if she knows that her son likes me and if it's obvious that I like her son, then they're like, why don't we go about it the right way? And they show up to your house and they ask for you for your hand in marriage. And this happens over and over again until you say yes. Damn. How many times have you been proposed to? Five. Jeez. Five is a lot. And what makes you as a how you can say no then? Clearly. You can say no. Yeah. Oh. You could say no as many times. I mean, I started getting suitors when I was like 17, 18. Just hearing the word suitors, suitors like, is crazy. Suitors I mean, I, I, I prefer, honestly, when I was younger, I was like, this is why I want to go date. Like, I, I, if I could go back, I would do the suitors thing. It's <laughs> ghetto out here. No, dating no, is the ghetto. Dating is the fucking ghetto, bro. <laughs> At least, you know, this man is showing up with intention, right? Mm-hmm. With his family. So what, he going to disrespect you after he came and looked your mom and dad in the eye day one? No, he's not. Uh, they do. And you know. They still do. That. They still do. They still do. They still do. They still do. But like the chances are a little lower. And at least the timeline that you're on, you're not sitting around. Is he going to propose? Is he not going to propose? I like it. And maybe this is just the way I was raised. Off the bat, I know you want to marry me. And then it's just a matter of whether or not I want to marry you back. Now, did any of those suitors already have wives? Because no. a lot of. So when you're uh, where so you're Persians from, don't do that. Don't do the multiple wives. OK, so like that, some do. I don't black I don't no, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's, it's no, 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 it's Muslims. It is Muslims. Muslim. I don't, and I don't want to generalize, generalize and say no Persians do that because there are a lot of there's like loophole marriages okay. and temporary marriages in Iran that a lot of guys do engage in with. Mm. But it's not traditional for Persians to have multiple wives. OK, so it's more of like a. a broader muslim concept but I, I not readily you, practiced in iran as growing up knowing like this is what you know my life should be like i should yeah. be meeting the married guy i mean not meeting the married guy but, yeah you know meeting yeah. someone to marry meeting someone just out in the open which i'm assuming you met your partner like yeah right? like in the real world yeah what standards do you think that maybe even your upbringing made him feel more pressure how, how i mean you- from the moment i met him i said you have six months i was married before Right. So I got married when I was 20 years old. Okay. Okay. I went back to Iran. My parents were like, you need to marry a Persian Muslim guy. And keep in mind, my my grandfather is um, from Ghana. So like we do. But but it's it's Iran. They don't want to admit that. Like I watched all my aunts get their skin bleached. Like the concept of even talking about us being black, like from the time I was young, I would tell my mom, like, hey, mom, like, I don't look like the other Persian girls like is. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on here? Because you're also Ghanaian. Yeah, they don't. Uh, Ghanaian. Ghanaian. Oh. They don't, they, they don't like uh, to. Oh, you said Ghana, not Ghana. No, I said Ghana. No, Ghana. You're fine. Ghana. Um, they would, Anthony. they don't like to really admit that they're black, right? And that's, that's a whole other issue that they don't mm. like to admit. That. But there's a lot of Afro-Persians, like a lot, a lot, right? I've met a few in LA. There's a lot. So anyway, I go to Iran and I'm like, I got to just find something that's middle ground. Because my parents want me to be with a Persian Muslim guy. I don't. So let me find one with tattoos. <laughs> Not one with, who's like kind of a hood dude. Like, I don't know. I got to find something in the middle. And I and I found a guy who was, I was 20. He was 25. He was tatted up. And like, you wanted something what, more American. More, Did you feel like? Yeah, I wanted something needed... a little bit more Western. And modern. Yeah. And modern. I wanted to get away from my parents and making me wear a hijab. That's mm-hmm. like the only thing that I was focused on. Okay. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of these households, it's like transfer of ownership from like your dad to your man. And I was like, I'd rather go to, you know, a new owner that that's going to be that's going to let me do more shit. Right. right. Now wow. I could drink. Now I could party. Now I could not wear a hijab, whatever. Um, so when I, when I met my current partner, I was just like, I don't really believe in the dating shit. Like, I really don't. I, if I were to do it again, I would run the same play. I don't believe in dating. I think it's so fucking stupid. I think it's time consuming. I think it always benefits men more than women. But how do you know? Because I think we live in, in a society. Months. I mean, I think if you ask the fucking right questions, what the fuck are we, if we're grown, if we're over 30, what are we talking about, bro? 
What are we talking about? What, so what does the conversation look like? Yeah, you meet a guy. Okay, let's, let's talk about it. That. Okay, let's get what into are your that. View, look, what are your views? Hold on, hold on. Let me pull out my notes. Um, I'm currently dating, so let me write this down. What are your views? What, what are your views on religion? Okay. That's a big one. Okay. I mean, if you go to any, if you go to any <laughs> therapist, no, she's right. And I'll if you, you go to any therapist, they say there's five reasons why people separate. So it's like just take those five reasons and work backwards. What are your views on fucking religion? What are your views on parents and how involved your parents need to be in our lives? And what well, fucking mommy daddy issues do you have? And if you don't know what mommy daddy issues you have, why don't you? And go figure the fuck out because I'm not trying to exist. deal with your Oedipus complex. <laughs> you over here. Either wanting to fuck your mom secretly, internally, and then or hate your mom <laughs> and take it out on women. Like, I'm not trying to deal with that. Talk about finances. What role okay. do you think I play in finances? What role do you play in finances? Mm. Should we have a budget? Like, is this an allowance? Situ- like, you know, talk about that. Um, talk about up- having children, timeline of children. Uh, how do you want to raise children? Like, how do you how currently do you, raise your children how do you, if you have them? Hold on, exactly. let me uh, ask you. Uh, oh, hold. Well, you've been dating someone for how many years? You gonna talk into the mic? Come on, act like you you be on a podcast, Wolf. How long for those questions that she just said? <laughs> how long did it take for you to know all those answers? I mean, pretty simple. What's pretty simple? I mean, so like I, initially, I knew that everything needed to to focus on that was there, and then I just needed a little bit more time, maybe like maybe like six months. And it was like, okay, it's all good. You know why I wanted to ask that? I was really curious as to people that have been together for longer and three years to me is long if they knew that early. I think you find out really early. I think the reason why people then delay it is because committing to someone for the rest of your life is a long fucking time and it's a hard thing to do. So if I'm a man and I could just I could push that commitment off for a little bit Mm. and still have the option to walk away. Why the fuck would I not take up that option? Why would I, if you know that you are, if you, if you sign a contract, right, you could sign it today or you could sign it in two years, but you're going to keep getting the benefits of the contract. Why would you sign it today? Now, what and about yourself? That we have heard time and time again from men and women yeah. that are trying to advise people in dating or marriage that conversations like these scare people off. That's why. Cause yeah. Commitment folks. Now, but. I mean, even that's, on a first date, I mean, it's yeah, I mean, don't go in there and be like, well, Lord, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what are your views on marriage? What are your views on children? Like, like, you got to be you got to have some finesse to it. You know, like eat the fucking food, you know, <laughs> what's, what's your drink favorite the fucking yeah, drink? Drink the fucking drink. Like, what's your favorite football team? Like, and that you, you got to just know a way to navigate and weave questions in because also you don't want to let people know that you're about to ask this intense question and they give you a Miss America answer. You want their true, authentic mm-hmm. response. When do you know you're no longer getting the representative? Because men aren't going to show up and For sure. kind of give you the answers they know that you want to hear, but yeah. that may not even be who they are. How do you wean through? I mean, that's that. The, the truth of the matter is you could do everything right and still end and up it still end with up some bullshit, them. right? And you could do everything wrong. And but it's, it's like, like driving, okay? We might get in an accident because the other person fucks up, but we... I think at the end of the day, as a woman, you can only do so much, okay? I, and you can't blame yourself if shit goes left. Like, you have to you have to just be true to yourself and, and do the things that you know you're supposed to do. And then if it doesn't work out, dude, fuck it. Fuck it. Who cares? Fuck it. It didn't work out. Next. There is always a net. No, I or, or or like figure it out there. But like you can't sit around blaming yourself like, oh, I was so stupid. I was so stupid. I was so stupid. Like I've had so many relationships where I've sat there for so long and blamed myself like I was so stupid. I embarrassed myself. I did this and this. And I, and I look back and I'm like, and what? And what? Like I figured it out or right. I didn't. But and what? Right. I'm going to sit here and blame myself for a man's actions. Mm. Why would I fucking do that? I'm gonna sit here and I mean get I, mad at well, myself. I've been getting... in a blame game myself for staying in something that I knew wasn't healthy and or that's too long. Fine. Like there's that. But yeah, yeah, like take responsibility when you go from victim to volunteer. Take responsibility for that. Okay. But Oops. also like sitting around berating yourself, other people gonna do Isn't it for healthy? you. You don't you I'm don't need to gonna do, do it. it for you. And do <laughs> and just people can't wait to remind you. People can't wait to see someone who's doing well fall because it makes them feel finally. Like they are, mm-hmm. they, they are close in power to you. Oh, girl, I know, I know the people. It was happy when I started going through my turmoil because I was so in in bliss the whole first year. Yeah. They're like, 
no way this man is this perfect and people for don't a year. Like that. And then want, I don't think that people want to see you 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 in pain. I think I think people probably felt like maybe you were out of touch for a moment because you were so in love. But, but also he so, out of love but, is. but also like, but, like, but also you, he showed up. I, I'm the person though where where I see friends and I know people who are dating somebody five months in. They're like, we need therapy together. What? Yeah. So to me, there's also this false sense that you can actually be in a honeymoon phase for longer than three months or six months. For and the sure. fact that yeah, my honeymoon, of my honeymoon phase was a year long, but also it might have been out of touch because I met him in a pandemic. Nothing was normal during the pandemic. No. So where literally we didn't have all of the outside things. My schedule wasn't busy. All of the things that it was just initially love. affected the relationship happened when the world opened back up. Also, I think as a podcaster, it's like people will hold you accountable to the thing you said last week. Yeah. So for you to turn into someone who's like, oh my God, my boyfriend's perfect. That's what you should be saying, bro. He was perfect. But, but that's what I mean. But also I don't the, think it has to do with people wanting to see you in pain. I'm just trying to say Oh, no, 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 no. But also if we're coming in here recording a month worth of content in two days. Yes, y'all are, go, the way even the, the, the way even we do happiness. it. But like y'all, y'all were getting my moods in two days sp- spread out for a month. I and you, you know what I mean, Wolf. So even when, if maybe we had a little bump in the road, by the time we come back into the studio in the You've next, you resolved month, it. I, I resolved it, and I'm back in bliss. Or yeah. if y'all heard me fucking crying, there's weeks where I've cried, and it looks like I'm crying for a whole month. Bitch, we came in here two days and recorded a month worth of content. Yeah. And my emotions within a certain time frame are going to be very similar. But this is what I'm saying. You're allowed to be wrong. Oh, and I, you're allowed to be wrong about I, a man. You're allowed to be wrong about a situation. You're, you're allowed to be fucking wrong because you're human and you can only go off of what's being shown to you, right? Mm. Like, what what were you supposed to do? Come in and be like, I'm happy, but I'm skeptic? I, like, that's I, I fucking weird. I wasn't talking about that. I'm talking about previous dating views. And that's what I mean about when you meet someone that changes your view. You were not the girl you were in a relationship. I'm not going to let you skate by that, bro. You turned but into I've, a way softer, I've also talked, more relationship girlfriendy. I'm cooking well, for this man. Well, also, again, not, again, so pandemic. It's not the day to day. But it's not the man that changed me. And that's the thing. I've been in therapy now for two years. Let's be very clear. How I view myself, I I, okay. I, got, I got my degree. I got two degrees. Um, and I, and I talked about, I felt worthless in my 20s. I didn't cook. I led with sex. I wasn't confident because of my body. Um, the way I valued myself is completely different than now. It's completely different than when I was in my relationship. So do you think that he was then the catalyst to showing you you? To, to me, to me, it was seeing value and now being so comfortable in my body to yeah. being able to afford and not go into a relationship transactionally. Yeah. I finally felt value in being able to like a man because I liked him, not because of what he could provide. Yeah. Um. Again, through therapy, I worked on setting boundaries. I worked on communication. You said my communication has gotten better. I have genuinely, through the pandemic, after graduating, leaving my career, and focusing on building myself professionally and personally, I genuinely feel like a better person. And so to me, even though he was able to receive that, that's where I've also been in this weird place with casual sex and just letting any guy come into my life because I'm like, oh, wait, I'm actually a good motherfucking catch. I just had not heard you speak that way until... But again, that's, that's why I said well, that. Comment. But, but it's that's not that I didn't well, no, see you but that's grow where I, or get a degree or anything. Well, but that's where I want to be very clear. That man did not make me a better person. I've I worked, didn't say you were a good person because but, but, you fell in love. Well, and I'm not, I'm just saying all of these reasons, again, my degree, therapy over the last two and a half years, me working on myself is now why I feel like I showed up as a better partner for him. So when I sit here and literally cry and be like, damn. How the fuck did I still get fucked over when I was showing up as the best version of myself? That's why I'm beating myself up too. Damn, even me showing up as the best version of myself didn't give me the result in a relationship that I wanted. You know what I mean? So the way I showed up to him had a lot to do with my self-work. And I think that a lot of women shift and shape who they are in relationships without doing the self-work, which is why now I'm having a hard time fucking dating because, oh, you, you don't want too to much rec- work now. Now, now, now you're too healed. Too much, you're work. too much work. Now I'm too healed. I'm, yeah. I'm telling and, you, there's yeah. too sometimes therapy. I said this a few weeks ago. But, oh I'm yeah, I, ag- cut it I off. agree. Like healing, <laughs> you got to cut it off at a certain point. Bitch, because now you're too you, much. Now you're too healed. <laughs> and every time somebody says something, you're like, "Well, you that know, doesn't work for me." And, and, and you're projecting. I could see from what part of your childhood that's the healed person talk too much. I'm like, 
You know when you can talk to someone and you're like, you must have just gotten out of a session. I can't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, or people me. who just got out of like a retreat. Like, I almost, think you say, it's like, like I want the man that's on the tail end of his therapy. <laughs> I feel that. Please don't get well, me. Well, I, I also say this like, I and I, it's become this hype, right? Oh, we want a man in therapy. We want a man in therapy. We got to be really careful because there's some trash ass therapists out there. And what they and do are? is they got these narcissistic men going to therapy <sighs> and they're lying to these therapists about because the therapy is about your version of and the fucking of story. Can we, can we flip it for a second for the men listening? Yes. I've been meeting a lot of narcissistic women and I'm almost exhausted with the narcissistic men bullshit. Because oh, no, no, no. There's narcissistic. So oh, oh, there no, no, no. no. are psychotic women out there. I'm just not dating them. So I don't know them. <laughs> Valid. No, 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 I'm just talking about who I'm dating. In reality, I think we're overdosed with narcissistic male content. Yes, and not enough narcissistic where, women. But the point is, these people are our friends, our sisters, our moms, yeah. our coworkers. Yeah. And then we sit in there listening to this fucking bullshit from them and don't even realize I agree. we should be learning the same skills when we're watching that video clip of someone being a narcissistic man and how to deal with them or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're seeing it the other way. And I think the issue now is women are almost feeling so empowered by seeing this one piece of content yeah. that now they're fucking putting that shit out into the world. And some of it comes from the, I'm holding myself at this tier of person. A I lot agree. of that narcissistic shit that men have is feeling like their self-worth is inflated. And I've been seeing women do it way oh, too no. frequently. Women are doing no. the same thing. They're hold on, real thing. quick. Three, maybe four now. I'm gonna just say three so y'all can't, three. Three of my homegirls recently... <laughs> Had they phones gone through. Niggas is out here going through phones, laptops, Apple Watches. All of these hoes was cheating. And all of them went to the men who literally are upset that oh they said, Jesus, why did you invade my privacy? Do you know all of their response was, well, I, I trusted you and you sat here and went through my things. All of the women answered the same way and gaslit the men who were sitting here seeing them entertain other men on dating apps, on seeking arrangement, fucking other people. Also talking shit about them to the oh, to the group. This yeah. is the one I want to talk about. BDD and I. And that's what they said. Who's a dude I've well, been dating for, on and off for years, right? He <laughs> said, I need to ask you this question because I feel like you're going to give me the most honest answer. Why the fuck do women talk shit about men that they're actually into? Mm -hmm. Why do you go in the group chat mm -hmm. and you fucking downplay them? Oh, group? yeah, yeah. No, no. I think, I think, I, I think we have to be so careful because if I'm coming to you every day and being like, my man isn't shit, my man isn't shit, my man isn't shit. And then I'm like, oh, why don't you respect my man? Why don't you respect my relationship? Ooh. Well, I, all I do is talk shit about this You person. don't respect him. Yeah. It's like and also like, I go, I go home and I have sex and the oxytocin reminds me how great he is, but you don't have that experience. So I'm just ruining your view of someone over and over and over again. Ooh. I also think if someone is that horrible where you're talking why shit you about them, the Bro, when I tell you I ate for three years, every time I would get in a little fight, a little shit I would tell. But for the most part, I was like, I am not about to walk and parade around. We were living in Mexico together. Bitch, I was enjoying my life. Was he not shit? No. But, but I ain't about to tell y'all that. We were having a ball. We still on the saying? beach. And he might the be on older, the beach texting a bitch. My but we on the motherfucking <laughs> the older The older you get, the more you realize how many women are actually with eight shit dudes, but you don't fucking know about it. Well, oh. not only well, not only that, let's be very clear. A lot of women aren't admitting to themselves how ain't shit they are in their relationships as Precisely. well. Precisely. So literally, if you're sitting here telling me all these things, yet, bitch, I know you, I know you cheating on him. I know you talking to another nigga. Yeah. So also, why are you holding this idea of this faithful man when you're not faithful? Yeah. So there's a lot of ways in which women are failing to show up in the relationships the way that they want their partners I to show up. I think women almost agree. sometimes aren't faithful because they want to keep the roster, bro. And most women I know and today that, that are that like... that makes sense a little bit. Because they're so scared I, I of also think their like own. our entire view of relationships is is like fully centered on infidelity when there's so many other ways you could betray a person. Oh, mm. right. But tell but, us, tell but us. But like our society and, and I get why, but our society is so focused on like infidelity being like the big headline thing. But there's so many ways you could like neglect a person. You could mm. fuck over a person. You could emotionally starve a person. Like mm. you could, you could make someone feel worthless. You could belittle them. There's so many ways that are, that, w that women do engage in with men. Right. That are never headlines and then the man cheats, which is not a fucking excuse. No, there's but no ever fucking excuse. But then there's no conversation where a woman can come and say, 
I did X, Y, and Z wrong in the relationship. That does not excuse and it does not justify why he cheated on me. That is a separate issue. But let me admit to the things and my faults in a relationship. Right. And they we don't, don't hear that often. It's like once you get cheated on, you get to kind now of you're as the a victim. woman, you get to hide behind I got cheated on. Well, what were you doing wrong? Not to justify him cheating, but what were you doing wrong? Because there's a dynamic at play and your dynamic is fucked up. What are you doing wrong in your dynamic? Not because you care about him, but because you need to figure out what you're doing wrong here so that when you go to the next person, I think you I can know mine. fix it. Mm. What is yours? You, I think that when I was getting cheated on, I was... In the first time, I don't think I did anything wrong. Okay. I think my response to the cheating uh-huh. allowed for the continual cheating. In what way? Because I wasn't as serious. I didn't stick by what I said in the first time. Oh, okay. About leaving him about um, setting boundaries. Like, I remember getting right back with him because I thought it was just sex. Even okay. though that may have been true, I never upheld myself to the standard of whatever. I can't remember what I set forth, but, like, he knew there was no consequence to it. He knew he wasn't losing me. And then the more he cheated, the more I was okay with it, but either treated like poorly because, because, because uh-huh. of it. Okay. So I was so frustrated with the cheating, but then I would act a certain way. So I wasn't doing the girlfriend shit that I set out to do when I took him back as my boyfriend because I was so mad about the cheating. When in reality, I should have just left him. Like, I think I wasn't sticking to the plan that I had for myself. And I think because he knew that I wasn't doing that, yeah. it allowed him to keep cheating. If I'm telling you I have a plan for my business, I'm going to be in three cities next year and I don't do it and I keep screaming about it, you're going to be like, okay, this bitch ain't about shit. Yeah. I stick to what the fuck I say when it comes to my money. I, I always do. I don't take L's from it. Yeah. But with my relationship, I kept taking L's on what I said I would stand for. And I think he saw mm. that. And Everything normal, else though. in my life, I was very, very good at doing. Yeah. He knew it. I would get up. It didn't matter what it was. If I was hungover drunk, I'm still going to make it. I never miss a flight. I'm always on point with shit. But for the relationship, it was always like this. Yeah, because your that's heart's what I, involved. That's what I was saying in the beginning, though. Like, your heart's involved. I know how I show up in, like, for most people, generally yeah. speaking now, how you show up professionally and in friendships just innately, unfortunately, is different than romantic. Of course. It just is. And so but I someone think it can matters, look at, though. No, it does. But that's where, unfortunately, because there's whatever the oxytocin that we get when we fucking these big dick, good dick niggas, we be so dumb in not being able to show up as ourselves and how we know how to show up in business yeah. or with friendships. For whatever reason, a lot of those boundaries are not kept the way we communicate, the way we really put those hardcore things down. They, they're a little bit more blurry in romantic relationships. Of course. I mean, it's not going to be the same as a platonic. Like, if my, if my girlfriend doesn't respond in two days when she hits me, I'm, I'm not going to be like, <laughs> Where have you been? You don't care about my emotions. You don't care about my well-being. I'm like, what's but good, bitch? You good? If a, if a man, man doesn't talk to me in two days, like, you don't care about my well-being. You hate me. You hate you are me. With other men. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I also think we, but we set yep. up ourselves for failure when we compare anything to romantic relationships. It's the expectations of romantic relationships that yeah. are oh, unrealistic. Yeah, I feel so triggered. I had the conversation last night. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm dating was fasting. And so. Fasting from what? <laughs> right. Food, food oh, alcohol, okay. everything, right? Okay. For like 24 hours. Air. So we were talking yeah. <laughs> maybe like around 3 p.m. that day. I went to like a food convention thing. So he couldn't come because he's fasting. And then like 3 p.m. I said something. This motherfucker didn't respond to me. So the next day I said, what bitch were you fasting with? <laughs> like, are Period. you out of your mind? <laughs> That's what you said? Yes. And he's, <laughs> like, he's, he's like, how is it possible that your brain went to another woman just because I didn't talk to you? By the way, I don't like, Wolf is over there just shaking his head like, what so is I'm wrong like, with you bitches? What part of my brain? Well, you know, the part of my brain where men are out here fucking fasting with other bitches. <laughs> and bitches be fasting with my man. You don't, part. You want to not talk to me? You better tell me you don't want to talk to me. Period. You better say, yo, I need a minute for this fast. I'm not about to but, sue. But can you I just say, I know, I know, I know. Is he so fucking rocking on it. <laughs> is, he, is he Muslim? No! Well, uh, this is a whole tip shit. Can I tell you? Yeah. Can I tell you? I, I understand why you asked that because one time during Ramadan, my current man, oh, I was not me. into him at the time. So I lied and was like, it's Ramadan. I can't have sex. So I didn't have, so I, <laughs> ah, ah, that's why you, <laughs> ah, that's so toxic. That's exactly why you should not trust men. Bro, I'm telling <laughs> I'm kidding, you. I'm kidding. I'm I kidding. Said, so he's like, yo, I'm like, so what did you do this morning? He's like, yo, like I just was tapped out. I was just trying to spiritually tune in with a bitch. Then I'm like, how'd you break your fast? 
He told me what he ate. He's like, I had a kale salad with salmon. Where did you eat that at? Lunch with a bitch? Because I know you ain't make no motherfucking kale salad. And who, like, who even told you about kale salad, bitch? What the, the fuck? fuck? A bitch yeah, had to put you on the kale. You that ain't how you put yeah. that homeboy yeah, on the kale. I don't care how healthy you, you he is. You said your homeboy's eating kale? That's YouTube nigga that. shit. You telling me right now you had salmon and kale? Now he laughing thinking I'm being crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not being crazy. And you are. But I'm right, ain't I? No. No. And... This is probably some shit you were you were doing in your last relationship. Talking about I wasn't doing nothing wrong, and then he cheated. First of all, change oh, the no, rhetoric. I started, I started cheating too. But <laughs> ah! anyway, let's go to why the girls want to talk to you. So I want to talk about one of my favorite things you said in the video. There's so many favorite things. Being with a rich man is lit. Now, obviously, mm-hmm. that would be the case. Yeah. But how are the girls going to find him, and how are they going to keep him? Okay, let's start with being with a rich man is lit. That was said in the context of, in comparison to being with a poor man. Okay. Okay. Like, obviously, if you take two men who are identical in every way, one has money and, and one, one doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> obviously, you should pick the one who has money. That being said, and I've tried to, I've tried to make videos about this and, like, the girls don't want to hear this side <laughs> of it. Being with a rich man comes with shit, too. Right? It being, does. It comes with a lot of shit on, on, on its own. So I don't ever want to romanticize like being with a wealthy man is just like so incredible and so amazing. And so like it comes with a whole host of its own shit. One thing I'll just say uh, overview. If you are with a man who a a minority, right, who's a millionaire within a capitalist white supremacist society, that man has to have believed in himself so much to get himself there. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you you need to because how the fuck else are you going to? Right. How are you going to move through all these fucking systems? A lot of these men have, as a result, they have God complexes. They 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 do have some bits of narcissism. They have high e high egos like it. That doesn't stop at work. That comes home. Mm. These are their personality traits. So the personality traits that sometimes contribute to a man being extremely wealthy includes lack of empathy, being able to compartmentalize, not being overly emotional. Those are the things that we have seen historically make a great leader and is is allows him to, no matter what bullshit he has, go and make a lot of money. Now you bring that home and you bring that into a relationship. It's not exactly amazing all the time. A man who doesn't have empathy, who struggles with that, that. Or now has these expectations of you to show up as maybe his soldier. Only because now Precisely. he's a leader. Precisely. He sees himself as a leader yeah. all the way around. Unless, like when we spoke with Adam, a lot of them may want to get into kink, submissive roles in that way. But yes, I want to say, this is interesting. So black women are surpassing black men in an entrepreneurial sense and college degrees and finances mm-hmm. by, I think it's like six times or something. Yeah. So if that's the case, and we don't really need the money, let's just say, I mean, we we still want it. But, yeah. Should women with money then be pursuing someone who's maybe not the richest guy? No, I actually think this is where it's all fucked up. And I actually <laughs> think women are f- completely fucked. I'll, and I, I'll explain to you <laughs> why. Fucked. Like, no, I, I genuinely no, I think mean, we're fucked. I, I think, think, I think if you're I think if you're a woman who makes money. You have two options, either dating a man with money. Now, that's hard because if you're in the one percent, there's only one yeah, percent for you, you to them. date. Right. And you either work with all of them. And that's assuming the people in that 1% who financially match up with you also match up with you religiously, culturally, height-wise, weight-wise, look-wise, character-wise, like all that. I mean, the chances of that are very fucking slim. So you're kind of fucked right here. Your other option is (laughs) going and dating a man who makes less than you. Now, the problem is I believe there's something innately within a man where if he does not make more money than you, now there's exceptions. But if he does not make more money than you, there's something about him and his ego as a man that gets like compromised, like where he needs to like fulfill it some other way, which is why you have women who end up dating men who make less and then getting cheated on by those men because they can't seem to feel like men without the financial aspect of it. And now a lot of that is attributed to a patriarchal society. So you're kind of fucked either which way. Well, guess we've had enough. <laughs> I mean, no. You no, no, like, out. I don't I don't mean to say like oh boo hoo like we're fucked, but like let's be completely realistic. Let's have honest conversations. As a woman, it is hard to find a fucking partner. Yep. It just is. Your options are finding someone who matches at your level, which is hard if you have fucking skyrocketed. 
right? If you have like a normal paying job and got normal degrees, that's great. You have more options. But I always said this, like, it's really hard for me to date. I am six feet tall. The, that in itself, the with, number of people. With a doctorate. Yeah. <laughs> with, with, with a JD. JD. I'm, I'm, I'm barred in two different states. And then I have another degree from Columbia. And out of, at a law school, I was making 250. So who am I dating? And I'm Muslim. And I'm attractive. So I have to, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there's, there's a total of what, like 10 men available for me. <laughs> Four of them I've already fucked. The other ones my girls are with. You. I hate Damn. you. I so hate So then let me ask you, getting into then relationships, only because I know we said we would talk about it. And I would love to know how you went into it. Prenups. Yeah. So a woman finally gets married, especially maybe one with her own assets or yeah. maybe not. We could talk, speak to both women. Yeah. You feel like prenups are a good thing and need to be had. Yeah. And I know a lot of women and men now, that word has had such a negative connotation. With Listen, many yeah. of the Jasmine and Chino, I don't fucking marry you if you do the prenup. <laughs> I love that show, first of all. And she's an insane human. And the reason, she's, she. <laughs> Chino. Yeah, that's <laughs> why you don't want to talk to me. <laughs> so wait, prenups, you think are a great thing. I think they're an amazing thing. I think okay. they're an amazing thing. If you don't make money, I think they're an amazing thing if you do make money. I think if you decide to want to be a stay-at-home mom, okay, and you make no money, but your man is making the money, without a prenup, when it comes time to get a divorce, now this varies state by state. It is, different yeah, it states have different, state. different laws. What are you really walking away with? Whereas if you had a prenup and you're like, okay, I'm going to be a stay-at-home mother and I'm going to get a, a percentage of this and this and this and this. At least that, because being a stay-at-home mother is a job. Is a job. You Having so, babies oh my is God. a job. Like, I would rather so go to work. Same, same. So, so <laughs> this is what I mean. So the same way that you wouldn't, you wouldn't go into a job and be like, you know what, bud, we'll figure it out. Like, you shouldn't go into a marriage and be like, we'll figure it out. Because what do you mean? I need to know how much I'm going to fucking get paid in case this shit goes left. Like, because I've given up my life to be your partner. And because we live within a patriarchal society that's going to allow you to go and date other women because you do not have to deal with ageism, whereas I fucking do. And you, so you do believe in a woman's value decreasing with I age? I don't believe in it. But I society think we, does. I think we live in a society that, that does. does. I think it's incorrect, but I think we do live in a society that unfortunately can't, values, can't fight that. values women based off of our age and the kids that Can we have. Can you say something that'll make me feel good? Because I just don't. Oh, yeah. I think get your fucking money, bro. Boom. I think get your money in See, any oh, way. How do, how, where do we meet them? Okay. So let's see. I think um, I was just in Dallas. I was staying at the Ritz. Uh, the bar at the Ritz. Um, and Texas Amazing. got them oil men. Listen. Take your ass to Texas. That's then leave because then you can't have an abortion. But uh, So hotel bars. Hotel bars. But go alone. Girls like to go in groups. That's intimidating. So can I be honest with you? Yeah. If you go alone, I need you to dress like you just came from work, though. Because yeah, they, don't they look like a, a fucking don't, escort. Don't go looking yeah. like an escort or prostitute. Not that there's anything wrong with being no, an escort no, or prostitute. No, there's not. But yes, the way but you dress matters. Yes, of I've had I've had friends removed from bars because they were accused of being escorts when literally they weren't. Yes. Yes. My yeah. Friend, literally, I, I think you cannot just go also, ladies, to these bars and look like a sex worker because they're a lot of times are undercover cops. Yeah. You will be removed from these bars, especially in major cities. Yeah. My uh, roommate I had when I was younger, she worked at a hotel called the Peabody in Orlando. Yeah. And she said the number one tip that they would get where like they had to alert the security mm -hmm. was that the person wasn't ordering a drink. The mm -hmm. woman. Because waiting for a man just get and waiting. No, for no, I think I think order your own fucking drink. Well, no, that, they're saying like if you're a sex worker. Oh, oh, got it. Got it. You're got not going to order the drink. But um, anyway, long story short, uh, so hotel bars, I, I think agree. Hotel bars. Oop. My bad. Not the phone ringing. My phone was I on. Know. Okay, I know. Why is this like grandma ringtone? Also, that is a grandma ass no, ringtone. Remember, baby. my phone was transferring. Oh, oh yeah, it's an update. She ain't set her settings okay, yet. Fine, fine. We'll, we'll she is time. going back to factory. Okay. I think at, I think at conventions and conferences, like I those agree. are amazing Okay, I'm going places. to Afrotech, you guys. I'm hosting an event November 1st. Go to my Instagram. I think Afrotech I, is an amazing I place. I heard that's where you meet them. I did also see... Um, All my ex-boyfriends are there. And this too. was a TikTok that I just saw, but that made sense. My homegirl sent it to me because now we're single. We're trying to scope out. Right. So there was another thing that, again, when you're a 1%, when you're a billionaire, 
a lot of them hang with other billionaires. Of course. So it was talking about uh, con like whenever they do the yes, the, the, con the boat film thing. Festival, um, F1. At, uh, what's the thing? Oh, our, F1 our Basel, was the one. Um, the Formula One. Yeah. A lot of the billionaires go to this, the Kentucky Derby. There's a lot of even yeah. events that they all like. Now, to go to. you guys yes. can all go to this stuff. So I talked yeah. about it. Um, a few months back, the F1 event I went to Miami where they like fucking, I met the owner of F1 Miami You go and on. he just star studded me. I think I was sitting next to Tiesto, Queen Latifah, like my name That's plaque. Insane. But you can go to F1 for like $150, right? Mm -hmm. You yeah, may not be sitting yourself, in this. Just, just get there. Just get, get there. there. Just get there. But this is why I say don't go with too many people. Just have one girlfriend. One, one girl. Two people Because it's, it's, a, it's a lot I easier like to move. I one person with two. because guys normally come in two. But for a hotel bar, I could see why you said one. Yeah. I think you had another video about going out alone. Can you talk about that more for women? Yeah. I mean, I just think it's a lot easier. And this fucking sucks that we have to make ourselves more approachable for men. So, like, I know. It fucking sucks. But I think it's just you're more approachable when you are by yourself. I think sometimes men get really intimidated when there's, like, when there's a, a, group. Like a group of five bad bitches. Like, they're just going to be like, mm, I don't know. And It's a good point. That's whatever. Like this. So when you're by yourself and you look like this is just something I do, like I'm not here for you, babe. I just like got <laughs> off work, even though I am. I just got off of work and I'm just here to get a drink and this is what I do. It's a lot easier. I also think there's nothing wrong with like sparking up a conversation. That does not mean that you need to pursue the man. But if he's sitting next to you, you could bait him into a conversation. Like, have you ever had the whatever? Here? Whatever's on the you menu. Know what, like, mm -hmm. do you know if it's good? And then he'll say something and you'll be like, mm, okay. But now you, you've opened the door saying, I'm interested to a com in a conversation. If you'd like, we can have a conversation. Do you know what men do as that? They what? compliment your outfit. I have noticed my friends, my homeboys have told me that. They're like, I love telling a girl about her sneakers. Now her head is gassed up. Now she's open. I'm like, oh thank you. And then boom, you're not saying you're hot. Yeah. You're saying something general. We already know yeah. you worked hard on your outfit. Like, I think there are ways that men are even sometimes afraid too. Yeah. Now, we snag the rich guy. How do we keep How do we him? keep him? <laughs> How do we set ourselves apart from the other women? Because we've been having conversations a few weeks ago, like, okay, do women compete? Most women, Mandy and our guests at the time were like, I'm not going to compete. Oh, no, I, said, um, I know we compete. I've always said we compete. There's always right, 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 a competition. Like, 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 there's uh, yeah, doing there's a competition. There's together. a fucking competition. But, uh, That's what the patriarchy is set up. It's for us to compete against one for another. For these men. Yeah. That like, shit. Is that not crazy? It's, but it's, is there a way so for a woman to stand out from the other women? I don't think... I don't think putting on an act to stand out is a fucking thing. That's what I, I was saying. I feel like that's not yep. who you are. Like, I think at the end of the day, you're going to stand out if you're that person's, like... For them. Yeah. Like, there's, there's... You can't put on bells and whistles and do all this weird shit to stand out for a man... The, and it's not who you are. And that's because what I was once saying. you go into Ooh, a relationship, because once you go into the relationship, how, how are you going to come? How are you going to keep up the act? There's so many times I've heard friends or men say, like, I don't have an ex that's ever said, like, we stopped fucking. Because that was always me. They've never been like, oh, she used to dress up or do this and blah, blah, blah. And it stopped. That was always me, at least the sexual aspect. Right. Yeah. Maybe I stopped cooking too much. But I do know that, like, the sex was always one thing that I felt like. I was able to keep up with. And I've heard so many times in relationships and marriages, men say, we don't have sex anymore. Yeah, I've never, I can't relate. I can't relate either. I actually have. I had a whole life. Uh, I, I, I've never, maybe except for one, has been a relationship where a man want, has wanted to have sex more than me. I want to have sex 10 times a day. And same. And and can go 10 times it, a day. And if lucky. we can, we're going. Yeah, like, well, I have a very high libido, so that's not my problem. But it that. Maybe for the man that, like, you meet, it's really important to him that you remember dates. I don't know. And you're naturally, let's say, good at dates. You're going to stand up for him. Yeah. That's just a match. But you can't manufacture a match. And you don't want to manufacture a match. And you don't want to manufacture yourself to be something for somebody that, that isn't you. That you're not all Which because he has, like, yeah, all because he has money. Like, at the end of the day, yep. somebody could have money. But if you are miserable with them, there is no value in that money. Listen. There really isn't. You, if you wake up every day. So much power. If you wake up every day and like you're just unhappy to be there, yep. that money in that fucking mansion in that penthouse isn't gonna go mean that. What th then? What ends up happening is you end up meeting a man who is good, who is genuine, who is sincere. And he the pool boy. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> My last relationship that happened, the person I fell in love with had way less than him and me, right? But then I would be away on these great trips, and 
just living a great life. And I'm like, ooh, but like, I hate the person I'm sitting across from. Yeah. And I think that being able to like see that, have the mirror in my face, like really has taught me a lot about what I'm looking for now. No, I can't date someone broke, but But I definitely can date someone that makes a little less. Yeah, I think that's fine. Like, I think a man can be a provider and not be a quadrillionaire. Like, I don't think a provider and wealthy are necessarily the same thing. Because, you know, there's a lot of wealthy men who are fucking stingy as shit and don't give you no money. And there's a lot of men who are good men who make, like, whatever average is in your book of, of money. And they provide for you. They show up for you. They they buy you. I need to eat and I need to go on trips. I'll be honest. I have every fucking bag I want. I have every fucking. I mean, I think that's a very fine standard to have. You just want some food or some trips, bro. bro. The more I'll I'll give you that. I swear (laughs) to God, the more money I've made, the less I've like want them materials. Bro, even like watches. I agree. Buying myself watches. I don't fucking wear them. I I thought Rolexes were going to be my standard. Now I don't even put them on when I'm walking down the street. Yeah. It's all these little things that I thought would make me more attractive just to the world. Yeah. When I started making money and now it's, I've totally regressed. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. The only thing I will motherfucking do every time is lay down flat. And I don't need to post that. I literally just did that from, from Dubai and I literally spoke to my friend when we were walking to the lounge about it. I was like, to know that I just could, I said, I want a bed. I want to be able to lay down during yeah. this fucking seven hour flight to Amsterdam. Yeah. And I just bought it. I was like, wow. Like the the idea that this at one point only would have seemed possible with a man with money. I know. Now my mindset is, so what do I need these niggas for? Bro, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, even when I'm crazy. laying flat, if I'm taking my South Africa trip this year, if you need to be in the back, that's fine. But <laughs> I'll be here. I will be flying I'm going to fly. Think, Look, wait, why are you shaking your head, Wolf? We can't both be in economy. <laughs> one of us make economy like, money. The now, other one doesn't. Now he has to sit. It, he can't upgrade himself. But no, like that ass, I think that's the only, <laughs> I think that's the only thing in my life right now that so I. So you're not, you're not upgrading your man? You're not upgrading your man, Weezy? Bro, I'm spending $4,000, $5,000 on these flights. No. You're not upgrading your man? I'm not spending that much on a man, no. No, I'm not. Okay, so here's my, <laughs> but so here's my question. Damn. You're not, and only because I like to do the devil's advocate. Okay. You're with a rich man. He flies first class, puts you in economy. You're going on the trip with him flying economy? I don't have to do the chivalry. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Look at Wolf. He does. <laughs> but I have a question. You're in first class. He just rode seven hours in economy. How do you think? I'm going to give him you, a, a, a massage. Bro. She said I'm a ma- girl. Man, I'm on some real bro. shit. Actually, only one girl. Happened. A massage. I was flying from Bogota to New York, right? Okay. And there was only one left, one seat left. And we wanted to get out for the next day. And my ex was like, fuck. We were like, should we split it? And he was like, yeah. And we actually did. It was six hours. Home. We did three and three. Oh, see, I didn't. Same, oh, thing, I, same thing happened with me and my ex, literally from Bogota. I got the first class. He was comfort. And I allow- I was too nice to that nigga. Allowed him to sit first class because he's 6'7". I'm 5'1". Okay. I'm sleeping the whole time. Yeah. Sit up in first class. Yeah. Never again. Nope. He was undeserving. Yeah. I will never ah! do that again. I'm first class. You go sit in comfort. This is ha- yeah, yeah, this has happened multiple times in my oh, relationship. Oh, I only do this for lay down. Otherwise, I don't care. I was upset. This has happened in my relationship. And I'm always going to be in first class. You can sit in the back. E- uh, even I'm- though you paid for it. This is like when a man lets me sit down when there's a seat available at the bar. I, I swear to God, it's the same concept to me. Yes, it is. <laughs> Wait, what? I have never had Why? a nigga let me sit up any oh, time I'm going to a bar. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, no. I'm getting Look seated at, first. Wolf is just laughing. Look, bro, he doesn't I, agree. <laughs> okay, okay, wait, real quick. Well, well, well. Well, real quick, Wolf, it, this entire conversation, us clearly talking about the dynamics of relationships. I saw you nodding your head a lot. You, you nodded your head. You agreed. You disagreed some. You laughed at some things. What what would be your overall consensus with our views of dating and how we're showing up and what we expect from men based on just this hour and change of conversation? I don't think I'll say anything that was crazy. Everything's within reason. I think I agree with pretty much everything she said so far. The only thing I disagree with right now <laughs> is it? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. Oh, so you want your girl to go to the back? <laughs> no, he want to be in the back with. Yeah, right. we want to be like together. That. Let's be together. Okay. Well, you well, know what else gets wife quality? Why, why is struggling wife quality? Because I'm in the economy. <laughs> <laughs> the elitism, <laughs> it, like that. No, 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 I know. I know. I, that was a I'm good one. I'm tall. I'm six feet tall. It's hard back there, and I have bad knees. So your man is gonna be even taller. That's his bad. Okay. See, I'm gonna say this. 
This is, the, to me, the same shit. <laughs> if I'm dating a man that maybe doesn't wear designer like I'm wearing... You gonna buy him a shirt? No. Oh. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't do that with my La- man. Lace your shirt I just up. let him know what ASOS I didn't like. is available, babe. Yeah. And you gonna find it. So my point is, if I'm treating myself, but you're not gonna feel things, weird at an event where you're da- like you're decked out and and he looks as long as oh, he's oh, oh, fly. Oh, no, no, no. I'll be real. In he today's fly. age, I think fly shit can go. Fly over shit can go without anything. being labeled. No, I agree. Yeah. Are you gonna? Let's say he doesn't have fashion sense. You gonna? Will you help? I don't date. I don't date. No. Okay. Well, y'all. You got to be able to at least put that shit on. No, like honestly, (laughs) you got to be able to put that shit on, bro. I don't think I'd be in that place where I'd be there. But I've also dated very wealthy men that can't dress. Well, precisely. Precisely. Wealth is not so style. Style is not attributed to money or labels. I agree. I agree. uh, That Fendi line, disgusting. Fendi and Versace. Awful and men just and that monogram that Dior. Oh, yeah. so I'll say this: I think <laughs> might be something on par with you, and it's what taught me that I could date a man that has a little less. So, just talking about clothes, right? A friend of mine, shout out to Maurice. He said, "I have to date a woman that has my same taste level," and I keep talking about this on every podcast, and I couldn't believe how true it was. He said, "Maybe she's not making as much as me," and I think he used it. Okay, I go to Japan. You never been? That's cool. But you're like, oh, did you go to this neighborhood? Did you see the Harajuku girls? Yeah, yeah. Did you go to Kyoto? I heard there's a really fast train. Yeah. That means our taste levels match. You for sure. So I think when I've dated men that have less, like, it happened to me a few weeks ago. I was getting dressed and he was like, yo, are those Rick? Rick Owen pants. And I was like, no, but they look like, he was like, damn, they got the same swag. Look at you with the dupe. Now we laughing about shit. I'm like, oh, so you get it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're wearing $3,000 pants. No. Like, you're getting it. Yeah. Because so, these Zara's going to hit, nigga. <laughs> I love so the Zara. Taste I love a Zara. The food nobody, is not an ass. Nobody will shame me out of Zara. <laughs> Ever. 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 But Zara's... But anyway. See, so well, the taste level when it comes to food, hotel stays, all of it, bro. If he can't afford certain things... Yeah. Even when I was broke, I was figuring out how to do X, Y, Z. And I Same. believe that is taste. I agree. I I was... If I could do it... In law school, off financial aid, you could do it with your regular paying job. Yeah, I was making. Well, I'm in school, so I have what like a thousand dollars a month. And Bro, I, I'm, but I'm I'm going on trips and I'm looking good, and I still figure out a way to get on a boat situation. I'm telling you, you, could, you could figure it out. People right. just don't want to put in the effort, or they're not as resourceful, or maybe it's people their are access. not resourceful. That's it. Resourceful. People people don't know how to. I I just keep saying finesse. Like you got to know how to finesse life. You got to know how to, life. you, you got to know how to move. You got to know how to, you know, get, 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 get on a fucking Groupon. There's some good shit on Groupon. Figure out, if you don't have money, I'm saying, figure yeah. out a way to get, get, get it via Groupon. Listen, get it, it is not this, beyond me, via... the men that take me to pay as you wish day at the galleries. I don't give a fuck. I, I see that you know what I like. You're like, what you doing Tuesday night? Oh yeah, look, nigga. And you know, you can pay a dollar instead of 30. That's fine. Yeah. At least we in there. I don't give a fuck. But that to me is like, you get it. Yeah. That is what I want. I think making a little less than you is I'm is is fine. I dated a man who made like very 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 low amount. What's and that? I, Just curious. I, I mean, oh, they gonna fuck it or go ahead, go ahead and get I you think, What's think, a very low amount? Sorry, two hundred low to you? No, no, no. It was like one twenty, and that was low. Okay. For New York, absolutely, I can understand it was how you LA. feel that way. It was one twenty. It was it was just too low for me. Um, but I was paying for everything. I just felt bad at that point. I'm not gonna hold you. That was my last. I paid for everything. Like I, I paid didn't, for a lot. I, paid I didn't for a lot more. Than I paid I for have. a lot. Like I didn't like that. I like to eat at nice places. I didn't like that. I would go to. I would want to go to a restaurant. Oh my god! And he would be like, "No, this was and literally he would be me." Like, babe, that's expensive. I'm I don't like, want to just get in the so car. I got it. Bro. I got it. I got it. Because so that what would, the fuck? And I'm not about to sit here and argue with you. I just I'm craving this pasta. And, and like, that's where that's where I realized taste matters, but also with restaurants. He literally. Almost to, to me, I felt like I was duped out of being able to enjoy the things I like because he said, why would you spend that much on a meal? Yes. Like literally, I, I like caviar Excuse added to me? everything. Period. Honestly, so I would pay for mother, it. I started the experience. I, 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 I couldn't I agree. get out of this fucking car and the valet guy, especially in L.A., doesn't take my shit. I want I don't to want to. in the corner. Yeah. Well, I, started, <laughs> I started secretly going to restaurants by myself. By myself. Same in my relationship and because I was like I, I go can't I can't pay for you all the time and also I don't want to deprive myself of this of what but, I like to do yeah so but I you know what? What? I now. Like for me I at least need once a week and it doesn't have to be the Michelin or whatever but like once a week of effort I was dating a guy What's in LA, effort like I was dating a guy in L A that took me to this like 
hidden restaurant in the middle of Rodeo. And it was hella cute. Like, I loved it. And I thought like, oh, you're trying. Like, you got me the Instagrammable spot. I mean, let me let me say something, though. Dates are expensive. We talking about Michelin. A regular date, a regular date is one fifty for a meal. Two fifty to three hundred. Oh, a date. Yeah, a date. date. Oh, Easily. the meal is. I just ate at Omar's Kitchen. Shout out, y'all should go eat it. It's in the Lower East Side. I know a lot of you guys went to Cadence. They told me you went in there and didn't know it was vegan. Oh, they told you that, girl. I felt so bad. I looked at that menu and I was like, and there were fans. They brought food out from the kitchen. I had to tell my friend, don't finish it all. It's good, but I, we don't want to. Oh yeah, I, Cadence I, is the restaurant. Cadence, and black owned. Black owned. owned it's, it's vegan. But another Girl, wait, one, we only left because they also no liquor. I said no liquor and vegan. I said, bitch, no, oh, no, they got cocktails. Oh, you didn't look at the nope. I there's wine and beer. Wine and beer is not a cocktail to me. Oh, they make wine cocktails. <laughs> <that's always lit. laughs> wine and beer is, that's not a cocktail. Oh, anyway, Omar's Kitchen. They do that's have fine. liquor. It's in the Lower East Side of Jamaican restaurant. We ate. I think it was one hundred and fifty five dollars. Yeah, this Jamaican food. This now, is what I mean. I don't, this is not a problem. Those are his prices and the food is great. And it's a, it's a vibe. That's a date night. But literally, I remember thinking like, when you think about going to like, I don't know, just a Caribbean restaurant, you're not thinking you're spending that much, but you're out here to have drinks. You're out here mm-hmm. for the vibe. There's music there. Like, this no, is you're what gonna you're going to spend you're on gonna a pay. fucking date. Rightfully so. Which is pay. what I used to tell my friend all the time, bro. You can't expect a man to take you for dinner and hookah three times a week. That's a thousand dollars a week. That's, in date. that's literally like fifteen hundred dollars. And on top of that, you want flowers and on top of like sometimes and I you do, might want him to pay for your Uber home. Sometimes I do feel for men. how hard it is for a man to date, especially if they want to date multiple women. I don't even know how the I hell know they, how they do, do it, it because uh, honestly, they need to set up a financial course because they're really <laughs> doing it out here. Like how you did it. How you dating five women and make no money and you treat Bro, them all up? Bro, real shit. But, but they're not. That's why is... they're inviting them to Netflix and chill now. I cannot date a dude that's dating too many people because it'll take I... away what he do for you. It, it really Yeah, will. you're stealing my resources. <laughs> bitch, you're stealing like, my resources. If I like want to do X, Y, Z and you can't, yeah. oh, is it because you just took this bitch out? But, but think about it. Okay, a man who's spending $1,500 a week on his girl on dates. Multiply, multiply that by four. Mm-hmm. Right, y'all got it. Dating is a rich man's sport, y'all. And then, and then add rent, and add and add car, and add this, yep. and not, there's no way he would be able to do all that making less than what, like a couple mil. Mm-hmm. I want to end this because I'm pissed. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. If y'all thought you? y'all would come here for dating advice, we just let you know it's rough out here, y'all. Dating is ghetto. The advice is <laughs> just fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't recommend just fucking them. My advice, I wouldn't is, recommend that. <laughs> my advice is just get get your shit. Get your money. You know, pour into yourself. Make sure you're good. And hopefully the right one comes. And if not, you're still laying flat on your way to Singapore. <laughs> Ooh, bitch, I know that's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Listen. I, that, that's one thing about us, we're going to lay flat with we or without lay, a man. I with literally or without you. Thought about, that's so crazy you said that. I was flying back from Paris and... I was in the pot. You know what has the door? The doors. The oh, or the D and D bitch. Mine coming back had a massage button. Oh, oh yeah, the Delta the, Suite. Time it was KLM. Oh, okay, oh, and it was KU. I, I was saying. sitting in there and I was literally reading a book called Rich and Pretty. <laughs> Period. And this nigga wasn't texting me back, and I was like, I am literally 180 degrees right now. I just had <laughs> fucking duck. Yeah. Do I give a fuck? No. Nope. No. I nope. can't give a fuck. Nope. I also, whenever I used to date certain men, I'd be like, if four or five million dollars were added to my account right now, would I give a fuck? And the answer has always been no. And then I realized that that means I'm only sad because I don't make enough. <laughs> and if I were to so make let me just go get more, another degree. Yeah, let me just make more money. I might be sad and rich better than poor. This conversation of the modern day woman is going to get our oh, ass. Oh, the crying the I know it is. It is. They going to chew But also, but... let's just keep in mind, this is talking about being rich alone. Yeah. yeah. And I think that is the most powerful thing because I've been watching so much content and hearing so much bullshit over the years of women talking about being sad with a man's money. Mm. No, I'm saying you need to get your money. That No, you I know, know what you're period, saying. Right. But this isn't the conversation that I've been hearing. Yeah. It's always about, oh, if he gets you X, Y, Z, well, at least you got this. Bruh, you can literally no. get that shit yourself the way you're just... Bro, my pussy gets so hard when I fucking peace do migrant. shit for myself. I my life is so peaceful right now. Y'all be like, she glowing because I ain't worried about no niggas. 
Yes. Where can people find you, Sahar? Yes, yeah, Sahar. Tell them where to find <laughs> I, you. I'm on TikTok, Sis Talks with Sahar, and then my Instagram, Sahar Karam. And that will be in the description of this episode. Y'all, if y'all want to hear more from Horrible Decisions, make sure you join us on Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash horrible decisions. Sorry, thank you for joining this us. This is amazing. Thank you and for having me. I don't know how long you'll be here. We're going to have to do dinner and catch up. Yes, now. definitely. Um, but yeah, y'all make sure y'all check us out. And this has been yet another episode of Horrible Decisions. Bye. Bye.